Our speaker today is Dina Eccles. She is a writer, farmer, and activist who loves life. A board member of the Wisconsin Network for Peace and Justice and on the executive committee of the Wisconsin Coalition for Justice in Palestine. Dina also writes a weekly blog, LetKindnessWin.com. Author of The Peace Warrior, you can find radio and podcast interviews and conversations at echovalleyhope.org, along with links to the Prem Rawat Foundation's Peace Education Program. Today, she will speak to us on being human, honing our inner strengths. Welcome, Dina. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear this? Is this okay? Okay, good. I don't know, it feels a little like I should tape it to my jaw here. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you for this invitation. And thank you for the beauty that's in this room, the expressions that I felt since the moment I walked in the door. So appreciate it. So appreciate it. We live, uh, Lauren, my partner and I, we live uh, an hour away on a farm. So come visit. It's a lovely place, Echo Valley Farm in Ontario. Um, but it's, so it's good to be, you know, there's not that many people in and around the, I mean, there's probably fewer people than a block <laughs> in our town than there are here. So it's, it's good. It's good to be able to travel and see. And everything that was expressed here today tells me that I'm right at home. So being human, being human, that's something that has been stripped away from us from birth, you know, baby comes out and everybody's all excited. It's breathing, right? Thank God, right? Yay. And then we, and it, the baby doesn't have ideas about race or any of these things. It just is so happy to be here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe that first cry is also indicative of something. I don't know. but. <laughs> But right away, you know, that, that blank slate, we start to inform it. Boy, girl. This binary world that we've created. And then what that will mean in your life and as you go through. And I know yesterday I, was, I got the opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to speak in Milwaukee to a, a gathering. It was called Survivors Fest. And it was survivors of every, every kind of people and every kind of violence and every kind of inhumanity. And it was so beautiful that people were just so grateful, so proud. And at one point I, I was, my survival thing for yesterday, I was kind of like, well, what have I survived? Am I white? seemingly white woman. <laughs> so, you know, my path has been maybe much easier than many, but not really. And I actually said to them, I didn't remember this, but I was told by my aunt at one point that when I was three years old and they wanted to put a dress on me, I said, don't do that, I'm a boy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so then you go along and then you realize that if you keep acting that way, they're going to curtail you. So you go into hiding and most of us in many ways, not just as being two spirited type people. And I use two spirited because it's, and I know that that's a con it's questionable for some people, but I have my reasons to, to do it because it's not about necessarily uh, sexuality. It's about being able to be fluid between what is feminine and what is masculine because we aren't these straight jackets. And I'm just giving you my example and because it's fresh on my mind from yesterday. But there's so many ways, you know, because then you're, you're ruled, you're, you're governed by how you should behave and, and those, that straight jacket. And we do it to the earth. I was listening to someone the other day talking about, and I had lived in Miami for a little while and I remember seeing the canals that in their great wisdom, the, uh, what are they called? 
Army Corps of Engineers decided that it would be much better if we just straightened the canals. <laughs> so they st spent millions. This happened way back. So they did. And then what happened was the water would go down and it started to pull up and it turned into a cesspool. The water was totally algae-fied and <laughs> I make up words. <laughs> and, you know, so, so that they had to unlearn what nature had done. And what, what, the way they unlearned it was nature started to teach them by overflowing the banks and doing what it had always done. So we, we are at this cross point. We are at a moment where we get the opportunity, if we choose, to do something we haven't done, to try something we haven't tried. And that's being human. And that's allowing peace to be our governing virtue, principle, policy, Good luck, right? <laughs> Good luck. But we can do it. It's been my experience in my life, because of my life, that I was uncertain of how I would meander this, this world. And so sometimes, you know, you've probably heard people pass, right? Black people, sometimes if they're light skinned, they pass. Everybody, we all pass, by the way. We pass with our clothing. We, I'm a farmer. I just got these. I thought, I thought they were a lot of fun. So, But, you know, we pass. But really, we are those babies. That's who we are. And our time here is shorter and shorter and shorter. So what we do with that time, I loved this, this beginning. It was so wonderful to be here and hear you understanding that we're here in this moment. That this is a gift that we've chosen. You've been, you're here and you're choosing this moment to be here. And so it's like to make the most of it. And that's what I could do. I could sit there and say, please let me, let me say something of encouragement, because we need that right now. We need encouragement. We need courage. Fear comes to tell us to be wary. But to live in fear is to live in an isolation that does not belong to a human being. A human being has so many gifts and it's time for us to open those gifts. It's time for us to use those gifts. Now when the world seems to be exalting in harm, harm to the earth, harm to one another, praising in the name of God, praising <coughs> cruelty, exalting in it, this is not humanity, it has nothing to do with humanity. So those of us who know that, and we know that, it's time to dust off all the cobwebs, because we've been sitting around passing. We're gonna pass as good, good citizens, right? We're gonna pass as, right? We're gonna do, we're not gonna drive too fast, we're going to wear our seatbelts. We're going to pass as good, good people. And we are. But we don't have to pass. But we have to celebrate. We have to celebrate in such a way that the celebration of love and peace and joy and all those things that we sing about and talk about actually can manifest. Because they can't. Because everything you hope for, not you, the you collectively, I'm included in that. That we, which we keep hoping for. You know, it's like, I have such a hard time. I cried. That first song, I cried. I lost it. I was like, I'm gonna, how, how am I going to speak? I'm going to cry. And that last song said, it's okay to cry. I said, good, because I cry about everything. 
I do. If I see a drop of goodness, I cry because I've waited my whole life for that drop of goodness in that particular moment. And that's where we need to live. That's where we, that's where we need to live every moment because it's the Prem Rawat Foundation, which is someone that we're partnering with. It's an international organization. I've known Prem since I was 19 years old. That was just a few years ago. <laughs> um, and I'm really proud to be able to um, offer the work that he's doing. But it's something that he always says is if a room is pitch black, just dark, you know, and you've had those dark moments in your life. I think November 7th might have been one of those dark moments. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But well, how much light does it take to pierce that darkness? You know, and it, and it really helped me because it would say you, you can't just take buckets of darkness out of the room. It doesn't work. You light a candle. You light a candle. Be the candle, be that candle, because that's the choice we have today. And that's the possibility we have today to be that candle. So when I got to speak yesterday and I, my, I don't identify so much. I mean, I am gay, but I never, ha I have had, always had a hard time with the label. I always had a hard time with labels, period. So when I studied with Navajo people and they said, my Navajo teacher gave me a name and, and I looked it up later on and it turned out to be a boy's name. I thought, oh, okay, she understands. You know, I just, because I couldn't do it. I didn't, I wasn't the two, two type, you know, it just wasn't a happening thing. And um, so when I, they asked me to speak down there and it was about Survivors Fest, I thought, well, and right now, what a perfect opportunity to talk about what's happening. Because since the election and before, because of the attacks on trans people, because of the attacks on gay people, because now they're not like me. I had to go pass, right? I had to go hide because I knew what was coming. But now they, we opened that door and now they're like, hey, this is who I am. And what's happening? The suicide call lines across the country have gone up over 200%. So what I said to the folks yesterday and I'll say to you is just be kind, be kind. People are, young people, they're just finding their way. They just wanna find their way. Maybe they'll assimilate and pass like everybody else. <laughs> Maybe that's what they'll do. But for now, they're not doing that. And they're in grave danger because of it. So I just wanted to say that to you. Um, but mostly really what I wanted to say to you is that all those things we sing about and all the gifts that we, we carry, they're real. You know, you might have come into this world and you might feel like, I don't have courage. Like, right, who was it, the tin man that didn't have, one of them didn't have, anyway, you might think that, you don't have that, but you do, you do, and you can cultivate it. You do have discernment, and you can cultivate it. Because, you know, it's like the lies are starting to, you hear the lies enough times and you start to go, yeah, maybe that's true, right? Maybe it's true, maybe we should lock everybody up. Maybe, you know, I don't know. But you know in your heart, it's not true. You know it, you know that huh, what the Army Corps wants to do, and now the DNR just gave permission for the Line 5. They need more permits, so keep speaking up if you wanna stop Line 5. But I'm an environmentalist as well. I guess I have a lot of free time on my hands. But that, you know, to stop that in our own lives, to stop that being cemented over and sing and do, do whatever you can in whatever way you can in this moment 
to change the course. I studied with the Caro people from South America. And one person said, one time, one of the elders said, how do you change the course of a river? I could ask you, anybody, anybody, how can you change the course of a river? Huh? You wait. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> hmm? Okay, you guys are all too smart. Most, <laughs> most people say, you know, you get these big machines, right? And you bulldoze it and you bring rocks in. And one person actually said one time, throw yourself in. And I'm like, like <laughs> maybe no, don't, maybe don't do that. But um, the answer that was given was go to where the water's coming up from the spring or what's coming down from the mountain, where it begins, and put your finger there. And that's how you will change the course of the river. So, something to think about. And I'm probably over time, because I can do that. Especially when, I can only talk when there's people willing to hear. This is, this is true. And the fact that you're so open, I'm so appreciative of that. It gives me a chance to be who I am, tell my stories, but also to, you know, honor, honor you. You have great hearts here. And may the next time, maybe the next time I get to come, it'll be, it'll be full. But if not, it doesn't matter. The numbers don't count. So, but the last thing I'll say is I left some papers in the front, in the entranceway, where the coffee is, of course. <laughs> And it talks about Echo Valley Hope is our nonprofit, and we're partnering with the Prime Rawat Foundation to offer this very incredible free class on peace. And it's called the Peace Education Program. There's a map there. It shows where it's being shown throughout the world. It's 10 sessions, and it's free. And you can do it by Zoom. And we're starting to train. Lauren's being trained as a facilitator. My job because I'm part of the Wisconsin Network for Peace and Justice, and so I'm kind of all over the place, is to introduce people to the program, and maybe somebody here would like to facilitate it. It's wonderful. Um, it, the topics are like peace, clarity, choice, you know, inner strength, tough topics. <laughs> it's only an hour, and there's no tests, and it really, it's, it's a lovely thing. So I'm very happy to make that an offering to you. And I guess I'll just say, I wasn't gonna say anything else, but I'm gonna say one more thing, if that's okay. As part of the Coalition for Justice in Palestine, Echo Valley Hope has been a member of that since its inception, which was shortly after October 7th last year. And I've been on the executive committee. And all I can tell you is, this needs to change. There's no right or wrong about it anymore. The, all the debates and all the justifications and all of it, it's like, at some point, what has to emerge is the sanctity of human life and our role in ignoring that. So uh, for what it's worth, it's a, it's a, the people who are on it, the, most of the people are Palestinian people and when you listen to their stories and they've lost hundreds of members of their family, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. And to know that our media has suppressed the stories. They're starting to change now. It's only taken a year. And that's the way it is. And we have to know that that's the way it is. And, but for that reason, not just about Palestine, but about everything. That's why we can never give up hope. And that's why we could never stop making effort. And so I'll wrap up with that. And I just say thank you so much for having me um, and having each other and carry on.